Hello and welcome to our show Centre Spot. On this week's episode, we'll be talking the Premier League. We've given you our picks for this week. We'll be looking forward to the Rugby World Cup final. And we'll be playing a bit of Who Am I? Wow. With me today <laughs> to discuss all of that, Cameras Lee! <laughs> Bonza! Woo! And Nife Bali! <laughs> Good to have Bonza back. <laughs> it is good to have Bonza um, back. Great to have Bonza with back. With Bonza being back, I think there's a place to start here. It's not my favourite place to start, but there's one team flying high at the top of the Premier League. Two points clear. Big Ange with a record points total as a manager in their first nine games in the Premier League. Spurs with a 2-0 win over Fulham. Bonza, how are you feeling about it? Very good. Big smile on the face. <laughs> um, it's, been a, it's been a lovely start to the season. I think, yeah, you take the points. I think the football, though, as well, has been fantastic. I think everyone will agree. Um, so it's not just the, the points on the board, but the football as well is fantastic. It's, it's very exciting. It's, it's hard not to get carried away. I know everyone's, everyone's getting a bit fed up with the Tottenham fans on social media. I've been uh, winding, uh, winding up a few up, a few Gooners, uh, a few Chelsea fans <laughs> as well. It's always in good nature, but um, no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I think by the time by the time this comes out, we would have cr- played Crystal Palace. Could be five points uh, at the top of the league. Say it quietly, man. Say it quietly. Say it with some but, chess, um, man. <laughs> Say it with some chess. We'll come, Don't, we'll please. We'll come to that later. But no, it's, it's been a great start to the season and we've got a lot of a lot of things to be happy about, Cam, don't we? Cam is Lee, yeah. Yeah. How was it? Look, it's been... Uh, Monday night was kind of, I'm not going to lie to you, but I don't know why I just felt so comfortable the entire day. As soon as the game started, Fulham just never really looked like they were going to lay a glove on us. Unlike another North London club they went to a few months ago. Um, so, you know, look, it was re- it was a nice just to get, because, you know, look, again, I said it about Luton last week, Fulham at home, Luton away. These are the type of games that Spurs love to mess up, you know? 100%, and yeah. so that's what, like, one reason why the tingles are starting to develop a little bit, boys. <laughs> it's because, you know, Spurs are winning games that they don't normally win. And it's, uh, yeah, really exciting time to be a Spurs fan. And it's just like the change, you know, compared to last year. It's like, that's why I think there's so much giddiness going on at the moment. Because, you know, when you've been, when you've been denied footballing pleasure for four years, you're watching Jose Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo, and bloody <laughs> oh, Antonio Conte. In the trenches. You know? Terrible. But like, <laughs> the trenches. Cool. What did Nuno say? I'll make you proud. Like, and, and it's like, now we don't even talk about him as manager. That's kind of just a dark... Everyone's forgotten that yeah, period. Big like, time. Two months now, or whatever it was. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah, yeah. It, was just, it was just... And now you know what? And it's, it's just great to see. And you know what I love the most? And what makes me most excited isn't even the fact that we beat Fulham and we're two points clear of the league and we could go five points clear on Friday. Friday, say it quietly. Um, is the fact that Ange came out after the game and he wasn't happy. Yeah, he was fuming. I think that's the first time as well. Yeah, he's cu- second half. Second, second half, we were. It was yeah. a little bit shambolic. We were giving it away. It was very sloppy, and it's just like you know, that's the standards I expect, mate. You know, yeah. and I'm turning to Ange myself here. Look at me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a yeah, great well, time to be a Spurs on, fan. On on your comment about Spurs going to kind of the other side of North London and uh, Fulham going to the other side of North London and performing well and giving Arsenal a good game. I think there's something to be said that Vicario, for you guys, Huge. makes an unbelievable save against the Paulinho yeah. header, which yeah. cost Arsenal or Paulinho goal from a corner. And Vicario's looked in- incredible, man. Like he, makes, he makes a few good saves in that game. Like Fulham did actually have a few chances to, to yeah. get back into the game. They Especially after 80 minutes, minutes, we took off three or four of our key players and we just completely really lost control. Yeah. And they had a couple of one-on-ones and he just, it never looked, the ball looked like it was never going to go yeah. past him. And he's like really been a little sort of uh, gem in the rough, I'd say, like just out of nowhere. What I would say is, do you think Calvin Bassey should be investigated like Sandro Tonali for betting Bruce? Because <laughs> <laughs> what was that guy was, playing yeah. at for both goals? He, he slipped off on both, didn't he? Yeah. It was interesting hearing Madison. Madison's always a great interview post, post-match. Um, Madison actually played with him uh, a matter of years ago and Madison specifically said, we're going to target him. Um, he's, he's left-footed. So Madison kept him on his right foot and you can see for... The second goal specifically, um, when he was when he, when he sort of hit hit him on the on the byline, lost the ball, and then we capitalised from there. Right. And he knew that he was on side as well. There were exact replicas of two goals. Both came from Bassi Madison being pushed Son. out on his weak foot, doing a Where's poor Madison? clearance. And then and, Madison um, and Son just linking up yeah. their partnership. I mean, I, I'd, I'd almost even say it was poor management from Marco Silva there because you've got an experienced 36-year-old in Tim Ream who's you know very established in the Premier League, played a lot of games in it, and they put um, Bassi, who's you know played one game this season. 
you know, in, a, in his weaker position. Like that was kind of always going to happen. You maybe think put Tim Ream out on his weaker side, let the less experienced guy be a bit more comfortable. But regardless, you know, Spurs, Spurs, are, Spurs are looking hot. Spurs are looking hot. It's a shame the North London derby and the fan debate hasn't come around sort of this, this week or the next week because I tell you what, and I said it there as well, I said can't argue it now, it's too early on. Vicario, like Fred mentioned, a doggy as well. I would be losing my head if I wasn't <laughs> yeah. forcing those, th th them to in that combined 11. Not bad shouts. Honestly, yeah, no. I, I can't massively disagree with that. Mm. Louis Thompson, how are you feeling Talk about Spurs oh, right now? <laughs> well, I'm feeling very, very nervous about them. <laughs> very nervous. I, well, I did say, I think the first time I was on the podcast, I, and, and I think they were playing Brighton, and I thought they were going to lose 5-1. Yeah. And since then, you know how wrong I've been. But I also said, which I sent you guys a clip yesterday, that Madison was the signing of the season. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, it's too early to say that's too early to say. He's been the best player all season yeah. in, across the Premier League. And yeah, Ange looks unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know the way Benton Core seems to be it's coming back. Yeah, and <laughs> the whole thing's looking a little bit shaky, a little bit ropey. I don't, I don't <laughs> like it right now as an Arsenal fan. They're definitely playing the best football in the league. Yeah, 100%. And right now I'm at the stage where the, the, I think I think they will win the league. No, I, think they win the league. Oh, I think I think it's written up. in the stars. Oh, I think it's written in the stars. He's, he's trying to jinx I'm not up. jinxing it. I think it's written in the stars. I think dirty Kane tackle. leaves. Dirty Kane tackle. leaves to win the trophy. That would be Spurs. Kane leaves to win the trophy, <laughs> and then they go all the way. Listen, they they their first eleven is very very good, you, and I yeah, don't want to say it. What happens when a human song injury no, comes? Fred, injury would you admit there are there are definitely parallels? I definitely recognise this. There's definitely parallels between Arsenal last year and Tottenham this year in terms 100%. of just the vibe of the club. Yeah. You know, Arsenal fans were down in the dumps a couple of seasons ago, and just you know you get on a, you got on a bit of a roll, you get on a bit of momentum building, and just the the energy of the fan base, the energy of the players. Um, if you can make if you can make White Hart Lane the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium a fortress, you know it, it's it's all about momentum. I hundred percent. Injuries, see the injuries allowing, Spurs could yeah. go pretty well this year. Yeah, but that's that's where I would say the the parallel comes in even more, where injuries really yeah. affected Arsenal last year, and I, I think at some point, ev even though we had Europa League, where we're playing kind of B team in the tough part of the season, we were out the Europa League, mm. so it, I think it you will happen. So. Especially yeah. when I was actually watching you guys on Monday, I was thinking. There are injuries coming here because your work rate is ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. 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 The, the pressing is, they don't is, stop pressing. is don't, seriously they impressive. Don't stop pressing. The one thing where you've had it, Arsenal have had it in, in previous seasons, is we, we don't have European football this season, which I think is going give, to uh, give us a... But there'll still be injuries. But that, that is, that is oh, what we've we, we, we 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 played once a week. That's 12 games. We, we're you know, playing, that's 12 extra games you played there to get to that stage. We're playing once a week. Yeah, and you're working so hard on that pitch and there will be injuries. If you guys go through the whole be. season without any key injuries, then fair play. But, I mean, of, yeah. of there's course, a massive they're, element they're of They're bound to happen. It's how long It's how long they're out for. Yeah, I think what every Tottenham fans... And at the time that they're out for, what what games have you got coming in that period? Yeah, like Saliba being injured for the end of the season yeah. was a big injury That was for terrible. That, yeah. that losses the league. Yeah. When, Saliba, when Saliba was out, so we had to bring it, hold of Obviously, there's an element of when they happen, who they happen to, what time of the season, all but, of that. But I think there will be some troublesome we, ones at some point in there. We're heading into November now, and I think a lot of Tottenham fans are, are looking towards January transfer it, like in advance of being like... Can Daniel Levy, for once, put his foot down and say, look, this is the sort of pivotal sort of spot now where we can go and invest in a better backup, perhaps for Madison, for example, but more so than anything, a centre-back. A centre-back that not necessarily starts, but can rotate yeah. um, when we've got, let's say, for example... Tough to find, have, though, man. 100%, yeah. 100% not, not easy. Yeah. But, guys you know, Dan. Daniel yeah. Levy, I can, I can see him now. He's sitting down with his trotters up thinking, you know, we're looking really good. I don't have to spend any money here. It's, it's <laughs> a, it's, it'd be so typical. But if we could just go out and spend a, a decent two or three players, not big money, but like good backups, for example. Listen, yeah. Jan, so it, I've, got, I've got a couple of guys I'll give you for free. So if, if <laughs> yeah. you want a couple it, guys, Give me Sancho on loan. What January, you can have for free, mate. <laughs> what, 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 what January is for Spurs, though, and for Daniel Levy, um, and especially if we're still in a competitive look, we, the next 21, we've got seven games next that are, is quite a hard one of games. We've got Newcastle, City, Chelsea, um, Villa. Um, so, you know, if we can get there, maybe 15, 18 points, if I'm getting a bit maybe carried away there potentially, and get into January, you know, second or third, within touching distance of the, um, of, the of top, it's a crossroads for Dan Levy. You know, another one, we had it before when we got to the Champions League final, when we got to the Champions League final, go out and invest in the team and really push them on. If we're, to if we're, in, the, if we're in touching distance, no European football going into the second half of the se season, no League Cup to care about too, just purely focus on the league with like fan base that are fully behind them. You know, Spurs could actually go out and potentially, I'm just 
saying it very quietly, Spurs could potentially do something. So yeah. Daniel, like, but it needs Daniel to go out and invest. And like, yeah. look, it's completely up to him. If he if he's happy with coming fourth this year, maybe doing something next year, which might not even happen, then that's up to him. But I would say if I'm Daniel, I'm going out and get saying, Ange, here's a hundred million. No, but you've also got to be super uh, careful of of doing that in the exactly. January transfer window. Mm. Like th- these teams do take time. These squads take time to build. You can't just in Jan go and buy a hundred percent the correct mm. players for what Ange will will want. He wants the right players too, and that's why You've we got did, to have and the right. Yeah. And that sometimes and, takes time, and which that's is why what we did. has done, yeah, because we didn't. We did, that's why the squad is kind of under, um, like no, not as sort of strong as it probably should be, because there was options that came up in the summer that Anne said, no, I'd rather have the players that I want instead yeah. of going for the wrong person. And Jan's which is such a notoriously hard time to get the right players. Yeah, yeah. you, you overpay, you overpay you massive hundred percent. I think well, shows how much is, is, how much does Daniel Levy want to win? Does he want to overpay for a couple of key players, or how yeah. much does he want to win? Yeah, the Premier League. Well, how much? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's oh, fantastic. It, it is. No, it's fantastic. You, well, you just said we're yeah. going to win the league. I've not yeah, said I, that. I, at all. I do think you win the league. But like, you know, we'll be the FA, the the FA Cup starts in January. How much does he want to go out and win a trophy? You know, you need it. Like even these like smaller trophies that you know, they still take a bit of investment. They still take a bit of effort to win. And we've got a good little thing going at the moment. Daniel Levy wants to build on that. You've got Carabao Cup as well, mate. That's all he's got, mate. That's all he's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the last thing I'll say is on the on the Tottenham front is you wouldn't think it is a, a four month project. I mean, I would I would say that our four month project uh, looks better than their four year projects. But I mean, on, on the surface, you can't actually disagree. Thank with you, Nico. You can't with actually that. disagree with it. I, I think it, like, they, I tell, they when, were in a better state than we were at the beginning of this. Oh, that, that is, is not true. true. That is no, not true. You not had true. better players in your starting lineup than Arsenal did when Arteta took over. Look that's at that, that, that back line last no. season. Look at that back line. I think that's actually a fair enough statement because they did. Arsenal did have Given that we, just, we sold our best same. player of all time the oh, day before the season started. Most of your team is still the same. You've added in Madison, a doggy. Van der Ven. I mean, Van der Ven. Okay, our, three, our players. Our back four, we've, we've had Pora came in, obviously not, not Jan this, last yeah, year. Jan and looks stinky. Uh, Adogi. Yeah. Uh, Van der Ven, Vicario. So that's already four out of the five. It is quite a lot. Right? Yeah, fine. But fine. you didn't, the whole team of Arsenal has changed pretty much mm. under Arteta except for Saka. Saka's the only one, really. Saka's the only one. Is, yeah. is Saka the, Saka's only, the one? only one. Well, Martin Martinelli, Martinelli was as well, but he wasn't bit, really... Yeah. Yeah, uh, an established starter yeah, at no, that point. It was really, those two. So he's kind of on the doggy vibe. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, but it, but it is pretty, it's, it's pretty much it. Is, is a question. Is a question for the for the table. If you're Arsenal right now and you were given the option, would you swap Arteta and Ange? Absolutely. I know who you're saying. Yes. I, I really rate Ange. I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. But Don't just go, go on from that. I think this is fantastic. <laughs> in terms awesome, of, it does it's, it. fa- it's fantastic <laughs> in terms of the Premier League season. Having the Spurs fans so riled up now, they're yeah. so like, they're so excited. Yeah, excited. Now every draw, every loss will kill them. Yeah. It will like it, in, yeah. like Ars- as an Arsenal fan last season, we knew what it was like. Like those Aston Villa like last minute goals, yeah. Bournemouth last minute. I mean, the, the, when you're in a title race, the emotion is just, <laughs> yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. High, it's high you can't describe it. Yeah, you can't. I can't describe the emotions I felt last year. Yeah. I, it was. It, I've never felt anything like it as a football fan. And if you guys experience that this year and you and you bungle it, oh, yeah, 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 but they like, won't get that kick, far, mate. I, 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 I think they will. I think they will. I don't think. No, but listen, I've, not, I've seen Spurs. I've seen Spurs lose the league to fucking Leicester, mate. Yeah. Right? Okay, I've seen Spurs lose to a Champions League final. Yeah. I know what it's like for Spurs to bungle. Yeah. So I'm actually. And look, it's so easy to get carried away, and I know I've been a little bit giddy. Like hands up to it, but like who wouldn't be? And you know, yeah. like and you know, Spurs will be third. Can we just Christmas. cover? Can we just cover? Mm. We weren't even in your top six, man. Right? Everyone go back to episode six, were, were episode you, five. Were, sorry, right? Were okay. You in, look, were they? In I, your I, top I, the, six? the high. I've, I've the watched, only I've watched, person. I watched the predictions. The bet. Harry, Harry Flynn Khan. He sat. He sat here. Predicted us fifth. I said sixth. Right. We I mean, didn't even know the Arsenal Sweet. was top six, so, so we can sick. we can bite him off. You right. went sick that of hope. <laughs> yeah, you it went did. sick that of hope. I know, but like you know, let's just let's like you know, everyone's getting it is, saying it like is Spurs. Still, but it's early. Nifa, you're coming it out and saying, early. Nifa, you're coming out and saying, if Spurs don't finish above United this year. There's going to be there's oh, going to no, be some no. big there's going to be some no, big no, no, wait, pause, pause. Like, like no, United no, haven't gone out and spent like wait, hundreds of millions. Cam, Cam, the only reason I've said stuff like that is because of the way you speak about Spurs. Oh, yeah. you're not that's gonna get a little bit gas. No, that's the only reason. That's the only reason I've said that because all I hear from you is. United are doing a great, aren't we? United yeah. are doing this, United yeah. are doing that. Yeah. If you didn't say it, I wouldn't yeah. say a single thing. 
I let you be giddy, I wouldn't say a word. But mm. I promise you, Where's do, the fun not, in that, then, do not that, let yeah. us finish above you because you will have a yeah. hell of a time. You're in, it, you're in it now, mate. You're, you're in it now. You're really you're in it. it. You're, in it. you're <laughs> in it. You're 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 in it. you are in it 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 you
big teams. Um, <laughs> and, and, and we are unbeaten. And the yeah. only game we've lost is to Lens. But as an Arsenal fan, I, especially in the first half of Severe until Gabby Jesus yeah. did that turn and played through Martinelli, I, 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 was, I was feeling pretty negative in that first half of the Severe game. It was the most negative I've felt about Arsenal in quite a while. Go on. Just that, on. that we, Keep going. <laughs> we, we have looked pretty poor this year. Yeah. Despite our results being quite good, we've looked pretty poor. And the only thing I can hope happens is that Party comes in with Odegaard and Rice and we look much better. You should buy another dog. We have been very poor. It's, it's, we've been, we haven't, I mean, our standout game was PSV at home. Yeah. We won 4-0. Other than that, it's been, yeah. every game's been a little yeah. bit yeah. like, it's been a little bit 4-0 at home. Very, though, very robo- or way, sorry? Yeah. 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 Very, it's been very, yeah. very robotic, well. very robotic. Yeah. We, we haven't played as well last season. We haven't played as well as we did last season, but maybe we're more solid this season. We do look more solid in terms of Rice, um, the the centre-backs playing well together. I mean, I think that's got to be a positive though that we're not playing well and we are still getting pretty yeah. good yeah. results, results. Yeah. Um, and points yeah. the only thing I think if Party, Odegaard and Rice start together and we're still poor is that maybe just maybe I'm wrong and Mikel Arteta should not have sold Granite Xhaka oh, oh, maybe that's, I don't, I don't that's, think should, that's yeah. my only <laughs> thought process can we talk about another yeah. mistake that Mikel Arteta's obviously made is this ridiculous goalkeeping situation oh, I, that, oh, that was the one thing I wanted to say yeah, I think yeah. I think let's go on to that a joke mm-hmm. I think yeah. it's a joke I think in two games well the two last the last two games he's been shown that yeah. Raya is I'm not going to call him a fraud but all the, all this playing out from the back that he thought he was going to do he's shaky he's incredibly he's nervous. incredibly shaky <laughs> nervous. and we said it we said it in our chat we said if he's shaky against Sevilla there's no way he can start the weekend and we'll see I don't think he should have started Sevilla. Like he probably um, shouldn't. Arteta has always said we have these two people in each position for competition, blah blah blah. And to be fair to him, he has kind of done it on merit. Tommy Yasu comes in instead of Zinchenko because Tommy's been better than Zinchenko, but he hasn't been consistent with that because yeah. Raya after the Chelsea game should not be starting ahead of Ramsdale. But, yeah. He's been shaky for a few games now. This is this is the issue now because then you find you take Raya out. What does that do to Raya? shoots down his not confidence he's now sat on the bench the whole world's talking about oh Raya's been performing badly that's not going to do him any favour Ramsdale comes in Ramsdale makes one mistake now yeah. one mistake yeah. and then the whole thing starts again and this is what I was trying to say like, you know when you signed him it's like you had a pretty good keeper there in the first place you didn't do that bad of a job and you've now just shot him down completely and now it's looking like you know I, I think Raya's a decent keeper I mean I tell you what getting Vicario in instead of Raya what oh that god 19, 19 bless, minutes instead of four blessing <laughs> hallelujah yeah. thank god that Raya hasn't Brentford actually been a problem with saving shots no. it's, it's, it's more the, 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 the way that Artes is trying to make him play mm. passing out the back I don't think Vicario does the same kind of no, uh, element part, of passing part of it. out it's, he, he does like a long he, he does go long when he Raya has Raya has got Fun. some serious tough tough instructions to Fine, execute yeah. I'll give you that but he hasn't looked at, he almost punched the ball into his he own punch, net he needed punch the ball yeah, but, yeah, Arte- but Arteta said after the City game that he's he's making him do it he's making him slow down yeah. the ball and like just not just smash it out like Ramsdale yeah. would but actually like but he's passing do a to precision the team pass. a lot he, well, he is, is doing that yeah. he's got away it's, with the, it hasn't actually screwed us up yet yeah. Yeah. but at it's going to, yeah, it's going, going to, hundred percent, it's going to. It's happening every game. <laughs> yeah, it's going to. <laughs> but happen next away. game. Like it's, it's going to happen at some stage, definitely. It's messed up as well because he, he takes Ramsdale out without making a mistake. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Raya didn't actually win the spot because Ramsdale yeah. was playing well. But Ramsdale wasn't doing what Raya's doing in terms of slowing down the play yeah, and like passing, trying to draw, yeah. trying to do a posi- Raya's position. Raya's only pass. been good when Kai Havertz has come on and his long passing is yeah it has been very good. Raya's mm. like in those games against City when Havertz came on those long balls to Havertz where he was knocking it down led to the uh, the Martin goal Lilligan. that Martinelli scored. And against Chelsea, it, the long ball from Raya to Havertz led to the sack across and the Trossard goal. So you could argue that there's two goals there that are very, very important for Arsenal that are being overlooked. But yeah. it's just, it's it's very, very uncomfortable it's not, it's not It's not a highlight reel. I think what we all, I made the comment about Onana the other day. Like the guy thinks he's Tom Brady. Like it, yeah. I'm not I'm not here for you to be a Tom Brady. I'm here for you to stop the ball going into the bloody net. Yeah. Right? And Raya, to his credit, has made good saves, but it's the opposite. Yeah. He's messing up with his feet. That's putting everyone else yeah. and the whole team in danger. But yeah, he is. It's, yeah, somewhat. It's interesting. You only talked about about a month ago, a month or so ago now, 
about these uh, tactical goalkeeper substitutions. Yeah, it's not happening. Are we, are we, are we going to start seeing that? Or like, <laughs> that, was cra- that was one of those outrageous things I think yeah. I ever heard. It was it was these two as well. Crazy guys. Guys. <laughs> There's been a few games that I wouldn't have mind seeing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Against Man City at half time, yeah. even though... Yeah. Arteta was right to keep him on. Mm. I think there was a lot of Arsenal fans saying, I was, I was watching bring thinking, on Ransdale. I was watching it thinking, bloody hell, we, we could be, we could be getting to this, this, this stage, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pote- but the Terchi, though, it could be a stroke of genius from Arteta. Ramsdale now comes into the team pumped up, yeah. like, ready to go. And you know, it could it could bring a better performance. Well, but I just really that never that, that's, no. it, just, it just it just it never ha- it never worked <laughs> out like that. Just every yeah, example where points. you've had two number ones at the same club. They both drop in form. They well, both drop 10. Well, we don't have two number ones, do we? We've got a number one who's Rye or a number two who's Ramsdale. Well, for now. We don't have two number that's ones. That's only seven days. We don't have two number ones. Games, Ramsdale's so. been dropped. Rye's in. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, on goalkeepers, let's go on to another team that won on the weekend, but a more important win midweek. So, Man U beat Sheffield United 2-1. Not a particularly convincing performance. A banger from Dallow. But more importantly, on the eve of Bobby Charlton, RIP, Man U at Old Trafford beat Copenhagen 1-0 oh. with an Anana. Finally, he has done something right. He has saved Man U from big trouble in the Champions League and you win 1-0 against Copenhagen in the he last a, He had a go at Harry Maguire, to be fair to him. And Harry Maguire. Harry yeah. Maguire and Anana. Yeah. Um, both both turning up in that game. So, Nifa, how are you feeling about your boys? It's redemption season. <laughs> <laughs> it's redemption season. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But... Um, Kudos to Onana and Maguire for actually sticking out here. I think yeah. there's been a lot of talk and we've all seen it. I've probably been guilty of giving Onana and Maguire a lot of stick as well. Um, no. Kudos to them for actually sticking to it. And Maguire has been very good the last two games he's played. Onana, big moment, saves the penalty. Honestly, I thought there was no way he was saving it. But kudos to him. I think he still needs to figure it out a lot just because I don't think, I think there's two parts to it. I think he's overconfident and our players aren't ready to have someone who's pinging the ball out to them and controlling it on the halfway line or getting it from the centre backs and stuff like that. So I think Ten Hag has to figure it out. But honestly, two wins, two important wins as well. I don't really care how they come as long as we win. Figure out the performances later and let's just try to get a run them, to be honest. Yeah. That's so you're, you're confident for the rest of the season? Then, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your definition of confidence. You sound buzzing. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a bit. Um, I'm in a limbo phase where I think if we lose a couple more games, I might not watch for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I, we'll I actually had a quote that I almost tweeted from you when you put it into the uh, center spot chat, and it was you might, United are so in the mud, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I did say that. I, I think that was that. a one nil to be honest. It wasn't one nil, but yeah. it was. I, again, I I said it. I just touched on it. The performances look terrible. Like yeah. we look shite. Yeah. Copenhagen dominated for about 65 minutes of that game and you're looking at who the hell are Copenhagen no offence to them yeah. but who the hell are you yeah. to come to Old Trafford and dominate the ball People it makes no your sense home these days mate we said yeah. it and that's they, what I'm saying they, they just they, they rob you it's, it's, it's ridiculous yeah. I, 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 <laughs> so I don't know so Old Trafford <laughs> get a drink from the fridge yeah. and clear off <laughs> a couple of points as well just, just for good measure alright this, this is why I don't like Spurs <laughs> See? this is why if Spurs finish below United yeah. I'm coming here on some uh, smoke yeah, yeah. I'm going to be on some smoke no, that's not let a man dream yeah, we'll, yeah, see. Man we'll see now. we'll see we'll see it's a marathon not a sprint it's a marathon not a sprint it's it's not been great from United but you're winning yeah, On to the other big game, Liverpool versus Everton, the Merseyside derby. Mm. Some controversial decisions in this one. HFC, I'm sure, a very, very happy man. 2 0 to Liverpool. Ashley Young sent off two yellow cards. Yeah. Probably correct it decision. Is, yeah. Penalty yeah. handball, correct decision. Yeah. And then the controversial one being Canate, double yellow. Yeah. Prob- should have been sent off. Um, and take it down to 10 versus 10 yeah. and then Liverpool get the penalty and go one up and then finish it off at the end with Mo Salah but what did you boys think of this game did Everton get shafted Camersley I, I'm not going to lie to you um, did they get shafted probably not no. uh, there was 10 it would have been 10 v 10 um, and we know Liverpool are relatively I know for a fact that they're relatively <laughs> decent with 10 and even 9 but what I would say is I'll tell you what that suggests Freddie and look when I came on here a few weeks ago after the Spurs-Liverpool game people talking about the dark forces a bit of conspiratorial chat 
right? Okay, and I hate to go there, but because other people are going, no, I'm going there now too, right? I'm telling you, this is the first example, and we've seen a couple already with just some you know dodgy fouls potentially after the Spurs game. Jurgen Klopp has basically like he's got he's got the Premier League refereeing you know team in the palm of his hand. Yeah. They're all terrified yeah. of giving a 50-50 decision against him because they know what if what if I'm the referee? That means a game has to be replayed, right? Like, that's what they're thinking, right? Like, what if I'm that guy, the first ever referee who made such a bad decision? They had to replay play again the first time in football history right because of the nonsense that this guy came out with right yeah it's just honestly like you know maybe it's not true but like when people go on like the way they did after that game and then you see decisions like that it's 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 you know it, it makes sense They're only human beings at the end of the day um but liverpool look good um they do look good i was kind of the way they sold their entire midfield in the summer yeah, and then, then be, it's, it's 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 to be fair to Klopp, testament to him the way he's kind of built that team up again and gone again I thought it was toast, you know, the, the whole seven-year syndrome thing he had going on. But they do look good. I'd, and I'd say good is the correct way to describe them not great. Yeah, I, 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 I think Liverpool are probably top four, yeah. but Definitely, I think third or fourth. But like they're, they're, they're not going to put a title challenge, I don't think, together. I'm with you. But e- Either yeah. Everton looked good... Liverpool didn't look great or a, a mixture of both. I mean, yeah. Everton gave a really good account. It, it's themselves. a derby, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're always tied. Yeah, Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool always, Liverpool always had them over. Liverpool, yeah, I mean, the record was uh, Klopp's, one win in. 17. I think Klopp's only lost them once. Or yeah, yeah, one in seventeen. But I think that. I think that brings it on to a bigger topic about the Premier League this season. I I can actually only name one team who I think looks great, oh, and that. that's unfortunately these fuckers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think every other team is having. Yeah. A cr- not a crisis mode but we're still trying to figure stuff out Villa yeah. look good as well yeah. but yeah. Villa have they got slumped by Newcastle yeah exactly they have the yeah. odd we're going to beat Brighton 6-1 and then we're going to get slumped the next point. week City as well. C- City, City yeah. yeah I mean City the Wolves game Wolves. Arsenal didn't, they don't really Do you know I mean? that game it's, it's a good Wolves I don't think any point. team actually looks like they're filing on all cylinders apart from Spurs and I'm hoping that's have they had jinxing God, this is music to a very <laughs> easy <laughs> start to the season though, but they've Spurs. played you we've, they've played us they've oh, played a couple of teams I don't like this I don't like this I will just say that you've played very lucky against Liverpool off. At home, yeah. no, that's a, there's, that's there's right. an element of luck to Liverpool Fine. result. Fine. Element of luck. Fine. Arsenal, I'd say Declan Rice got subbed off at half time. With injury, was, was a big problem. We, we, we Gino that, comes yeah. on and gives you your second goal. Yeah. Man U, Romero penalty. Yep. Should have been a penalty. 100%. Got away with it. And then the rest of your games have been easy games. I think actually when the fixtures came out. They said Spurs did, out of all the teams, have the easiest start mm. to the season. So if you then take the big games that you've played, <laughs> add in each one of them the element of luck that you've had, I think you've got a very, very interesting few weeks coming up. Mm. And it's season uh, defining. You've got City I'll give you that. At some next point month in yeah. the next few weeks, right? Dece- beginning of December. Beginning of December, you've Palace away even is I'll, even though they mm. do look like they stink this year. Yeah, it, there's going to be some interesting. Games I'll translate you what Freddie's just said. It's a yeah. title performing team right now. <laughs> Tottenham getting away with it, it, getting it, it, lucky. L- lucky in, 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 yeah. a, in a sense in some games, but you know decisions go one way or the other. I think Liverpool obviously is certainly um, yeah it was very unfair. But United in, in as well. Situation. United decisions go both ways. Um, <laughs> Arsenal but, uh, and I, and I I know that you've got to make your own luck in football, mate. It's not like yes, Spurs yeah. have paid refs. Spurs no, you points against Spurs. Spurs. It's, it's not Spurs' it's fault that they got you know the referee had a fucking head loss. I'm, and, like, I'm just I'm just pointing out facts. Yeah, that <laughs> in in those games, you had the Liverpool game, an onside goal was for some reason not given. Crazy. In the Manchester game, a penalty that has been given in multiple other games wasn't given. In the Arsenal game, I know we don't love injury excuses oh. here. Didn't have Martinelli. Didn't have Trossard. Didn't have Party. Declan Rice gets taken off at half time. Yeah. Uh, I, it, it, and so you weren't true. playing the best <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah. And, not, and you still drew 2 uh, 2. I'm, I'm not so, going to repeat myself. Can I just give you a bit of rebuttal on that? Yeah. On those three games that you just said. Of course right, you okay. Can. So Arsenal. That Arsenal away is Spurs' worst fixture of the league yeah. of the season by a country mile. We've got an awful record there. I think it's like two wins in 40 years or something ridiculous like that. So to get a point there, that is just zero points in the calendar booked in. So to get a point there, that's a point extra. Mm-hmm. Liverpool, we haven't beat them in six years, right? I don't, watched last year's game where we, we were 3-0 down at Anfield, make it 3-0 and they score a last-minute winner. That is typical Spurs at Liverpool. It's just decisions don't go our way. So we got a bit lucky against Liverpool. Man United, right? You can remember, we've got, we haven't beaten, we haven't beaten United at our new ground in four years. So that in 
Dan itself was a bit of a goal. We outplayed and Spurs, we, we did, we did. We but Spurs, them. historically yeah, against Man United, did. have a horrendous record. So, you know what? Finally got a bit of luck against those three teams. But, like, you know what? You need you've a bit of luck. You've also got to add in there, though. Luck, you've man. also got to just think long term, right, for Spurs. You've had easy games, the other ones, out of out of, out of of the other teams that you could have played. You played the bottom four. How do you got on with you've, Fulham at the, home? These are the you, games. How do you got on with Fulham at home? Fine, 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 fine. You beat Fulham at home. Well done. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> but you haven't played. You haven't played City away. You haven't played three Liverpool points. away. We beat City every year. Away. We love playing. We haven't, City. We haven't played we, those three we, away either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we love playing City. City. But no. Uh, <laughs> Tottenham top, top 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 got points against the um, against the smaller teams. Like the, the Luton game. Just the final thing I said. The Luton game. Going into it on great form, you think, yeah, we're, we'll pick up three points. Probably the worst or second worst team in the league. Yeah. We go down to ten men. I can guarantee you, under Mourinho. Uh, under Conte, just in general, in the past, we would not necessarily lose, but we would drop points in that game 100%. Yeah, that's right. such, that's so that's such a ridiculous lose. statement, man. That, no, that's no, it's no. so ridiculous. 100%. That's you can't, 100%. You can't that is the sort that. of game. We go down to 10 men. Oh, we're still favourites. It's just so, it's just so to ridiculous. Win. We drop points. In. No, why is it ridiculous? It's like, it's like, it's like the same thing with Fulham. You, you say that, foot, like, how can you, you, you say, then, then you you can't be expected to win any game. Then, as a Spurs fan, you're saying, "Oh yeah, like we we, we don't usually beat Fulham at home. We don't usually like no 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 yeah. We, 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 we always go and bottle it and you so it's on, just... you score last minute goals all the time yeah, how many times I've been, I've been watching a Spurs thing when we're under yeah, pressure this game's under over pressure. overtake Arsenal and stuff but to you go top of the league it's, it's, uh, it's, it's special times coming from Spurs okay Everyone's we've had enough of Spurs forget yeah. Spurs we've had enough Spurs we've given you we've given you your credit leave it out let's go on to the picks update where it got a bit tasty this week things have changed up a little bit so Cammers Lee and HFC Got eight out of ten correct this week. Wow. wow. Eight out of ten. The two that you got wrong, Cammers, were a draw between Villa and West Ham. Damn. Which was actually a poor decision. You yeah. should have just gone for Villa, I mate. should have done that. And then you went for a draw between Brentford and Wolves. How did that even finish? Brentford won, no? Brentford won. Oh, really? No. Uh, sorry, not Brentford. Bournemouth. 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 Oh, right, okay. Wolves. Got the initials here. It's uh, <laughs> throwing me off a little bit. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that that was a that was the the best of the week along with HFC, and that's 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 had an effect. I think what was it? MBK got seven, which is best week by far. <laughs> Me and you, Nife, got six. <laughs> MBK shit. <Yeah. laughs> we do love you and me. Nife got shit, six. Yeah. So and a big announcement, boys. Center spot finally won an acre. <laughs> we won our Premier League acre. What's funny about it is that we placed a sacker. And I hadn't put together everyone's predictions, like mm. what people had done and figured out the majority. I put Tottenham in our acca uh, to win. And when we've gone through and gone through everyone's predictions, the majority was actually a draw in that game. Oof, wow. <laughs> so we got away with one, but yeah. we won a lacquer, boys. Tomorrow. Come we won on, a lacquer. boys. Dubs for the center spot. And what that's done to the leaderboard in eighth place, still Angus Jones, 31%. <laughs> Seventh place. Can't clap that, man. Louis Thompson, man. How are yeah. you still down there? You've tried so much. Wow. 35%. <laughs> sixth place, less, 42%. Fifth place, Bonza on 44%. You've got a chance to, to, to redeem that. Fourth place, MBK, 45%. Third place, Nife, 46%. Joint second, HFC and Freddie on 53 percent it's quite tight there and first place after an absolute screamer of a week on 55 wow. percent it is now cameras lee i had weeks at the top of that table and i finally cameras lee's been coming for me mate. slowly <laughs> over the last few weeks and i've been and i've been getting ripped for you know sitting on fences mate yeah it's just you know sometimes you, just you gotta... didn't actually sit on many fences this, this time really around no, one of the ones you sat on the fence on you got, got wrong so get uh, off the fence. Get man. off the Actually, fence. Learning, and man. actually, both of the ones you got wrong <laughs> were the were, draws. Were draws, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did go for other draws. Self defence Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back a horse and stick with it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's the mix update. Uh, let's just go on to our picks this week, the Premier League picks. Friday night, 8 o'clock, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Cameras Lee, I'll go to you first. Oh, God. It's got to be a Tottenham win, doesn't it? Come on. 2 0. <laughs> yeah. It's a weaker Palace team without Elisa and. Uh, so, and I don't rate them this year. I like what we did last year, but I just don't um, I'm going to go. 
Tottenham win, of course. Um, 2 0. 3 1. Louis? Tottenham win. Nefe? Tottenham win. Oh, I'm going to go Tottenham win as well. <laughs> oh, that's just a full house. So now we're going to lose. <laughs> odds, odds odds that, gonna so lose there's that. actually pretty good odds on that. 4.2 for the Palace win, 3.8 for the draw, and 1.8 for the Spurs, Spurs win. Yeah. So yeah. not bad, the 1.8 there. Eh? Free money. Free we'll chuck that in the Acker. <laughs> we'll we'll lose, our, lose, our, lose our bet by yeah. Friday evening. Um, Chelsea <laughs> versus Brentford. 1.62 for Chelsea, draw 4.0, Brentford 5.25. This is 12.30 on Saturday. Yeah. I'm thinking of Chelsea, I think. Yeah. Brentford haven't been great this year. They have not. Chelsea. Chelsea. It's My tempting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say draw. It is very I've tempting. Get, I, 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 I was impressed by they Chelsea. They were pretty good at home yeah. against Arsenal, yeah. Awesome, yeah. It looks like they're heating up a little Pick bit. Some speed. Just in time for Tottenham in a couple of weeks' time. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to go draw. Draw. I'm, I'm going to go Chelsea. I'm going to go draw. Need for going numbers there. Yeah, Three numbers. o'clock, Arsenal versus Sheffield United. This is the odds on the Arsenal 1.10, 9.5 for the draw, and 20, 23, so 22 to 1 for Sheffield United Bloody to win hell. this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which maybe <laughs> some people could argue is, is some value. <laughs> but <laughs> I've seen a list of their injuries, and it's yeah. nuts. It's got like one Sheffield point United from nine games. Yeah, yeah and point. they have so many injuries to, to, to start. They're going down, they're, they're going down is, with the ball. Is, 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 yeah. is everyone Arsenal here? Yeah. 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 Is I'm everyone Arsenal? Okay, okay, we'll go Shit, Arsenal. It, yeah. We're all agreed so far, know, boys. Yeah. Tottenham, Chelsea, Arsenal. Bournemouth versus Burnley. A little bit more difficult. Bournemouth 2.1, draw 3.5, Burnley 3.3. Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth yet to win a game this season. I'm going for their first win of the season. Bournemouth. Ooh, okay. I think between up. both teams there's one win and that's Burnley just one win have Burnley won? against Luton they've won one game they've won against, against, against Luton so I mean to me this kind of screams like a draw um, yeah draw for me I'm going Bournemouth win I'm going to go Burnley win I'm going to go Burnley win really? I, I, I think Burnley have yeah. from what I've seen from both sides I haven't watched most of their games but from what I have seen when they've been on TV, I think Burnley may be... Like edges. Edges. So is that, is that a draw for the Akka then if we whack it in there? So two two Bournemouth, two Burnley and a draw? No, it's three. Three Burnleys. I think... I think was that, wait, who did you say? No, it was uh, a draw. Draw. Well, you, think you, you, you weighed that Burnley, one no? on the Akka. Yeah, Bournemouth. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a game that we might not yeah, chuck fine. in. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a, it's a tough game to call that. <laughs> Wolves versus Newcastle. 4.2 for Wolves. 3.75 draw. 1.8 Newcastle. Surely four house. Newcastle? New yeah. Everyone Newcastle? Sure. I Wait, mean, who's the whole result against Wolves. Dortmund yesterday, 1-0 at St. James. It's Champions League. And also, also yeah. but like when they beat PSG last week, um, a couple of weeks ago, they went well, went to West Ham and they, they, they scraped a draw there. Yeah. So, you know, you know there's what? always that fall off. When you play uh, when you play under the lights in the Champions League, mate, yeah. you know, that's your big big game of the week. Then you've got to go Molyneux. Yeah, the, I'm going to go, <laughs> gonna go to Wolverhampton. Yeah. Like. I'm going to go for a draw for that one. I, everyone will go Newcastle. I'm going to go for a draw for that one. I'm going to go for a draw for two. Actually, I'm going Newcastle win. I'm going to go Newcastle. Newcastle win. Newcastle. Yeah. Okay. West Ham versus Everton. Two point one for West Ham, which seems like good odds. Decent, I can't lie. Yeah. Uh, three point seven five for the draw, and Everton three point three. I'm going to go West Ham on this. Yeah. West Ham. Also, go West Ham. West Ham. Yeah. Tasty. I'm going to draw. Draw. Yeah. Typical. Okay. Draw okay. merch, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Sitting on the fence. It's got it's got into top spot. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, Aston Villa versus Luton, one point two five for Villa, six point zero, eleven point zero, ten to one for Luton to win. Villa, Villa. everyone, Villa. Villa. Side note: Captain uh, Ollie Watkins in the. Oh, thank week. you very much. Yeah. I, I I have great respect. Great. Eh? With me and Neith <laughs> were sitting on that sofa earlier today discussing it, and I said, "Do I go for Harland and the hat trick that he's inevitably going to gonna score against Manu yeah. or or Watkins Ollie Watkins?" And I've yeah. gone for Watkins. I think, I think they've scored the most goals at home as well. Um, Villa, yeah. They've won 12, 12 on the bounce yeah, at home. They're scoring a lot at home. Bounce. So The top yeah. goal scorers in the league or like second top. Like they're, they're It's the top three goal scorers in the league at the moment are Brighton, Villa and Newcastle. Really? Which I just think is uh, yeah, that's yeah. quite, quite good. Quality stat. of the league, mate. Quality yeah. of the league. True. Brighton versus Fulham at the Amex. 1.5 Brighton, 4.6 with a draw. 5.75 for Fulham. Brighton. 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 Yeah. Brighton. I saw something today. Brighton, sorry, this is very random. Brighton, every single game has had three goals or more, and every single game, both teams have scored. Oh, really? Oh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty wow. crazy. So, wow. high scoring, high scoring, Brighton win 3 1. Yeah, fair. Yeah. I think Fulham do need a kind of comeback after that Spurs performance. They were very poor. Um, Liverpool versus Forest. Liverpool 1.25. Forest 10.5, and the draw 6.25. Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool. Liverpool. Liverpool at Anfield. And the big one of the weekend, Manchester United versus City. I like these odds. Man U at Old Trafford, 5.25 to win. 
draw 4.0 and City 1.62 away from home to win it Cameras Lee look if Man United could get it done here it's huge for Spurs <laughs> <laughs> I love that's what you do um, um, now I think I and I actually think these games are always tight United always love to show up for them especially when they're in a bit of bad run of form <laughs> I think oh, I think it'll be a draw I think it'll be a draw there's, there's no way that City don't win this City are winning this they haven't been good though. I'm going draw 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 I'm going to see. <laughs> 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 we've, well, got, we've got to be pragmatic, right? Let's be smart. Yeah, right? come on, on this game as well, we will be doing our first oh, yes. ever live wow. watch along with the boys in this studio. Sunday, 3.30 kickoff. Yeah. Come to the Centre Spot channel. We'll be here. When we going live? 3? 3.15? Yeah, bit three, of pre-match three, three, match build up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit of pre-match build up. Come on. Couple Chat with the boys. <laughs> and we will be enjoying the game with some Man U fans hating their lives, yeah. which will be nice. Can't but wait. I think most of us will be supporting Man U, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Until yeah, it gets yeah. to like 2 3 nil, and we'll enjoy <laughs> their, their their misery. Mm -hmm. But on that, that brings up all of the uh, all of the picks for this week. And we'll go on to Rugby World Cup. Two semi-finals, one of them good. It was a good semi-final. Yeah. Unfortunate for England fans. England put up a great effort against an unbelievable South African team lead for 70 odd minutes yeah. 77 and a 70, half. 77 minutes and uh, it comes down to one kick at the end that they put through and win 16 15 and England don't go to the final which is unfortunate New Zealand destroy Argentina absolutely destroy that was yeah shouldn't have been a semi-final and the final is South Africa versus New Zealand 8pm Saturday Big one, Nife Bali. What do you think about the semi-finals, and what are you feeling about this final? I think the Argentina one is pretty straightforward. Isn't yeah, it? they they just got battered. Yeah, and I think uh, it it just shows again. I think we touched on it last pod. You can't, as much as we did, discount the likes of New Zealand and South Africa at the start. <laughs> you you discounted. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm roping us all into my mistake. All right, <laughs> we're all in it together. We're center spot team. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> center team together. So. Yeah, those guys have the history. They know how to get it done, unlike Arsenal, for example, in the Premier League. Um, they know how to get it done. They nice. did the job. They did the business. Um, again, to the Saffers, I said it. Manny Libok is not going to get you anywhere. You bring on Pollard in the 35th minute, what happens? Yeah. Slots the you did say kick. that, actually, Nipa. I'll give I you said that. it. I'm always right. Maybe uh, not. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting final. I do think South Africa win it. But, again... I've been wrong, so I wouldn't be surprised. You finally see. come over to my side now. You finally see the light. Unfortunately, the light, the Springbok. Unfortunately, it's going to be a great weeks. game. The It'll be a New Zealand game. versus South Africa is yeah. a World Cup final. Yeah. Yeah. Just those two countries playing against each other. Yes, yeah. it's going to be amazing. So it's, it's very exciting. I'll be watching. But we also have a team of the tournament created by the Centre Spot fans that we've put on our Instagram. So we're going to go through the team of the tournament before the final because yeah. we can kind of already tell who's who's in there. Nife Bali, I'll throw it over to you. You've you've run this. So who is in our team of the tournament? So there are a few surprises on my end, but I'll just run through it. And then obviously the fans, let us know if you disagree. Some of you might not have voted, but here is the center spot fans Rugby World Cup 15. So we have Ethan De Groot, Piato Malvaca, Franz Malherba, Eben Etzebeth, Theo McFarland, Courtney Laws, Ben Earl, Ardi Sevilla, Antoine Dupont, Richie Mwanga, Cheslin Colby, Bundy Aki, Waisea Naisalevu, it's a tough one, <laughs> Damien Penault, and then Bowden Barron. Any surprises in there? Anyone you disagree with? I disagree with Bundy Aki at 12. I think really? it should have been Nick Tompkins. Ooh. I think Nick Tompkins was absolutely incredible. You did actually make a shout for that in yeah. one of the earlier episodes. Yeah, that, exactly. But I think Bundy Aki was pretty, pretty I'm not sure. I, I think Nick Tompkins has shown that he is, although small, he, he can handle himself and yeah. he was fantastic. Another shout, and slightly controversial for the English. I think Jack Morgan was better than Courtney Laws in the World Cup. Fair enough. So they're two shouts, but again, I won't disagree. I think it's a fairly balanced team and they would go pretty far no in the Khaleesi World Cup. In there. Yeah, no Khaleesi. There's there's a couple of shouts, but again, I think it's you, you pick on what you watch and yeah. people have watched certain guys and have enjoyed them. So it's probably definitely an English bias at play there too, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I, th I think the <laughs> Courtney Laws one's <laughs> a, a bit of English bias, but <laughs> yeah, Courtney Laws definitely with some English bias, I think. <laughs> You know, these things happen. It's what the fans Come fans on. voted. Yeah. So let's go on to the big fight of this weekend. Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. Big fight. 
somewhat generous. But we will be watching. Louis T, how are you feeling about this one? Uh, I'm feeling quite excited, actually. Yeah. I think, um, well, Fury's going to, I think Fury should knock him out pretty early. Yeah. But um, one point two for the Fury KO. Fury looks really, Fury looks really confident. He looks, um, he looks good. I've been watching a lot of his interviews. He looks very up for it. I don't think he's taking it for granted at all. And Garnu, he's gonna be. I mean, and Garnu, would he win an English title? Would he? He definitely wouldn't. He wouldn't win a British title. You know that guy, um, you know the Bosch guy, the Bosch son. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He'd probably beat him. <laughs> Bosch. John, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bosch, the the son of the Bosch yeah, man, yeah, yeah. probably beat him. Yeah. Beat yeah. Garnu. <laughs> Really? I mean, you think so? Yeah, and Gar- mate, he's, and Gar- and Gar- he's, he's an MMA fighter. And Garner just looks happy to be there. He's yeah. happy to be he's there. He's getting a paycheck. Being there, like, he's getting uh, a big paycheck. He's getting a paycheck. He's a, he's a number a, I've made or whatever he says. He's like. a badass guy. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a UFC fighter. He's a UFC fighter. He's a UFC fighter. He's a UFC fighter. He won't win. You've seen how these UFC fighters fare, man. Cameron, like in the boxing ring and he's fighting the best heavyweight I'm a soccer man I get yeah, sucked in the best you are, you are, one you are, of the best heavyweights Cameron, Cameron, he's, gonna, yeah. he's gonna go in there and have a swing yeah. but you're, you're up against the best in the world I mean I'm, it's like any any top UFC fighter what chance would you give him like percentage wise 5% chance really Oof. Yeah. it's 1 in 20 5%, 5% a bit generous 5, man, yeah think, maybe yeah. less but yeah if you're, if you're should batter him but what's even more important after that is what they've actually announced the fight before is that Fury Usyk have signed yeah. for December and I think it, well, they I haven't. Think, yeah, the date. I was going to ask. I think the date shaking. Do you think they fight December twenty third? Well, Us- Usyk saying so exciting. It would be so exciting. Usyk saying he, Usyk present. saying he won't be ready for December. He's okay. saying he wants to fight in April. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it in December. I think um, April. I mean, what? Yeah, I saw something saying that um, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder might be on the undercard. Yeah, Fury, Fury shot that. Undercard. Down. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. You Maybe. can't you can't have them on the undercard. They, that, yeah. that, that's their own yeah, event. Yeah, yeah. That's their own event. I mean, if Saudi put up put up the money for it. Because I think Fury's now said that he's gonna he's gonna fight all the rest of his career in Saudi Arabia. Because I think they're paying him I think a hundred million for the total in Garnu and Usyk double. So um, but surely AJ and Wilder wouldn't go on the undercard. Of AJ it. wants to do it. AJ's lost his head completely. Well, a Fury Usyk, uh, a Fury uh, Usyk, they'd be willing to go on the undercard. That's, yeah. that's it. That's that's main event. Co-main, co They'd be co-main. It's a picture. It'd be like, load, it'd be like the prime card. They probably, they've obviously looked at KSI, taken a bit of inspiration, <laughs> yeah. and thought, you know, how can we add this into? But they can, they can sell their own event. Yeah, they for can that, sell man. it. Yeah, like, it's huge. But at the same time, but they do do it, and the Saudis put up the money for it. Imagine that not? event of Fury, Fury, um, Usyk, and then pretty historic. What, like Wilder Joshua before that. Yeah. It would be unbe- It would be an unbelievable event. But no, they won't. It won't happen. But yeah, I'd, I'd, it's hard to see where. It's hard to see what happens after this. In terms of like Usyk Fury, I think Fury should beat Usyk. I yeah. think Usyk's thirty eight now. Thirty seven, yeah. thirty eight. Fury's 35, still in his prime. And well, that's a fight to look forward to. We won't discuss that, that that much right now. But yeah, we've got a good British British fight on, on, on the undercard. Ad, Adi, Adi, Adi Ayle versus Fabio Wardley. Nice. I actually met Fabio Wardley, great fighter. Yeah. And yeah, that's a great fight to watch. Heavyweight, heavyweight contest. We've got a few heavyweight fights. There's a lot the of heavyweight fights yeah, on the yeah. undercard. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. four or five or something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. which means it's going to be a good card. And yeah, yeah it's going to be exciting. Action. It's going to be, yeah, action, exciting. You know, they, Quick, the main event's pretty much. Could I ask? Because I feel like we're at this point, you know, now that this U6 Fury fight's kind of been booked in a little bit, yeah, the bit that that the Wilder versus Joshua is kind of progressing a little bit more. I feel like we're coming coming to the end of this generation of fighters, especially yeah. heavyweight fighters. Yeah. Who, who? I'm looking around at this heavyweight division, and thinking who who steps up here? Do you know, like who who's going to be the next in ten years' time? Who are we going to be sitting on the sofa getting excited about the big fight? Like who who are those guys coming through? In your opinion, we've got a guy called Delicious Ori, who's yeah. um he's going to go into the Olympics this year. Well, next year actually in, in Paris, he's won the he's won the Commonwealth gold. Good fighter. I go. I went and watched him in the amateurs in Serbia, and he'll be the fa- he'll be kind of like the, one of the poster boys of the um, British Olympic squad next next year. And let's see what let's see what he does. He's twenty six years old, and he should be good. And also, we got a guy called Moses Atuma, very very good. Powerful name. Very very good. Eighteen year old. He's apparently he's dropped Daniel Dubois in sparring. Oh wow! Ooh. Very extremely talented. They're 18. saying that. He wants to be the youngest. Um, he wants to be the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. Beat Mike Tyson's record. I think Mike Tyson got it at 21 years old. Yeah. But you. But this is the type of guy who can go in next, and he's. Will very, he very go talented. Olympics next year? Then and he's, he's pro. pro. Well, like, Atoma, he's pro. Atoma's pro. Atoma's pro. He's oh, wow. really had like four or five fights. Jeez, at 18. Very, very good. Powerful. Can box. British. Slick British guy. Oh, wow. I think he's got ni- half Nigerian, half cool. something else parents on that. Yeah. But like unbelievable fighter, and he's the next guy. He. You should be hearing a lot of, about him. In the next few years, so you don't see Joe Joyce or Daniel Dubois. Joe Joyce is finished. Joe Joyce got knocked out by Zhang. Yeah, nasty knockout. Joe Joyce is also 37, 38 years old. Of course, came went pro too late. Went pro at 32 years old. I mean, he was always gonna like, and he was the juggernaut. Can't be stopped. Can't be. Can't be dropped. 
got dropped and he got dropped pretty badly. <laughs> can be dropped. Can be dropped, can be stopped, can be knocked out viciously. Yeah. So yeah, um, he, 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 I, don't, I don't see him going the anything. Paul put, put a good fight against Usyk though. That was quite, you know, Parker, people. Who, Parker? Dubois. Dubois, yeah, Dubois. Dubois's not that great. Dubois quit versus Joyce. Yeah. He quit, he's bit, but he got, Dubois, yeah, Dubois won't be a world title. He won't be a world champion. Fine. Yeah. Most of the two are delicious story. They're the two. Up the boys. All right, let's go on from boxing and go on to the centre spot. Round up. There's not a huge amount to say here. NBA, Nuggets beat Lakers. Called that out last week. Suns beat the Warriors. Two big games, yeah. but kind of expected results, Nife? Um, I wouldn't say expected as such. I think the, the Warriors-Phoenix one was tighter. I think yeah. that one could have gone either way. The... Denver one you expected them to beat the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. The only thing to say is Wemby's first performance. Yeah. He looked like the guy. He looks yeah, like yeah. a cheat code, mate. He, he, he only 15 it. points though. But, right? but he's just starting out. I think yeah, he's yeah. in the NBA records for number one pick. I think he's like fourth or something. Don't uh -huh. quote in his first game or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So he looks good. Whether he can continue it, we'll see. He's playing for a Spursy team, so I don't think he'll go anywhere, but <laughs> Yeah. We'll see what happens. Well, How tall is he? Actually, seven, 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 six or seven, four. Just, seven, just four. on the uh, Spurs thing, I, I, I probably shouldn't bring this up as an Arsenal fan, but I don't know whether anyone saw a picture of I William Saliba this week where he had a picture with a chef that had done some cooking for him and he was <laughs> wearing a Spurs basketball jersey. So oh, the I San Antonio see, Spurs and it's got Spurs written over it and as an Arsenal fan, that doesn't quite sit. <laughs> yeah. You would have thought. <laughs> that that is, how many teams are there in the NBA? Yeah. Like, no, 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 but I, I assume it's because of Wemby. It's because like, of the French oh, right, the yeah, young yeah, guy the that Fair. he's supporting that. Right. But just a picture of it going on social media, yeah. it wasn't, wasn't <laughs> ideal. It mm. gives some, some kind of ammunition to Spurs fans that we didn't need. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, we, we move on from that. We, we allow it being an innocent mistake. And uh, we got to England losing to Sri Lanka in the Cricket Jeez, World Cup. Gosh. And essentially, it's they're gone. They're gone. Shocking, man. It's over. What England out of on? two World Cups in yeah. one week. Yeah. Tough, tough week and for England think. fans. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Cam, what, what, what have you... Uh, what, what did they get bought out for? One, 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 five, one seven. five, six. Against Sri Lanka knock it off, knock it off Sri 25 over. Yeah. Sri Lanka had won one game, yeah. I think. And, and they did it with eight wickets to go, mate. Eight wickets just, to go, 25 overs, they knock it off. I mean, They were on, on track to get yeah. 300 plus. Ridiculous, mate. Yeah. I mean, how we've gone from kind of the height of the summer with the Ashes yeah. into, you know, Stokes comes into the team. Yeah. Um, we're World Cup season. champions, man. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's really poor. I think, I think Josh Butler's come to the end of his time. As, yeah. like, he won the World Cup in, he won the, the T20 only at the beginning of this year. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, got... God, I, I literally can't explain it. I don't yeah. know why they say that. I think uh, I saw a quote from Just Butler saying something along those lines. Like, I just it, it doesn't make sense because we've yeah. got one of the we've got one of the best batting lineups in the world, and we just can't bat for for you know yeah. for anything. Yeah, and it's it's oh yeah, I can't even explain it. It's very disappointing. Yeah, not uh. good. We'll we'll move on from the misery <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of of England's week. Cricket's a shit sport anyway. Ben was white. Was I was going to say that bloke a few weeks ago on TikTok that called me out for my comment in cricket man. Where, where are you now <laughs> alright let's go on to a quick game to end it we're going to test your ball knowledge we're going to play a bit of who am I you've got buzzers in front of you fantastic when you say so ball everyone, knowledge it's just fantastic. football fantastic yeah, uh, buzzer, yeah it's, it's, it's football it's, 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 it's football yeah. we've, we've got five players here if we want to if we need a tie break or something then we'll go guess the career path I've got a few players Ooh. There for, for, for any kind of tie break nice. situation. But we're going to start with I played for both Man U and Man City. I won a gold medal at the 2004 Summer Olympics. I won the golden boot in 2011 12 Premier League season. Carlos Tevez. Hey! Oh, he's got it. I was going to say that. I was, I was, I was going to say, say it after the United crazy, City, but yeah. I thought, let me wait. Yeah. For a you know what? Do you get there? Yeah, so I've got five uh, prompts for all of these. So right. Nifa gets three points there. He got it on the third, oh, wow. third oh, prompt. Wow. So if you get it first, yeah. you get five. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> there, there's an incentive yeah. to buzz in earlier. Yeah. Nifa gets three points. Next one. My move to Man United was the highest transfer fee for a teenager at the time. Wilfred Zaha. 
No. There's no way. Fuck. It's incorrect. Kamersley is frozen out. Ooh. Both of my brothers are professional footballers. That was me. Give it Ferdinand? No, not Ferdinand. Uh, yeah. You buzz. You, you can, yeah. You did buzz, yeah. Lukaku? No. <laughs> and now it's gone to the Man U fan. <laughs> I know who it is, but I'm just waiting for the third one. Okay. I was named Premier League Player of the Month in my first month in England. In England? Playing playing in the Premier League. Okay. Wow, so it's not who I thought it was. He's all over the oh. gap here. <laughs> Wait, how many, how many left? How many, how many He's got two more. Oh. And then everyone can come in. I received the 2015 Golden Boy Award. 15? I had a Ballon d'Or clause in my contract. Can, can I go now? He has one guess. You have five, four, three, two, one. Stumped. Martial. Oh, my, 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 he got it. He we'll gets one. We'll oh, wow. that, was, that was, yeah. Sam, that was tough. No, he won bad. Would you have got that? Would you have said Martial? Yeah. No, I wouldn't have got that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going rude. Oh, good. I felt a little bit bad there. I felt a little bit bad there. It's the 2015 that threw me off. I was like, what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 2015, eight years. The other one that I had was, yeah. I didn't live up to the hype. Yeah. But yeah. You maybe would have got that one. I won the Premier League three times with two clubs. My professional career started at Chelsea. I was named Stoke Player of the Year in 2010-2011. I played for Germany 19 times. Wait, sorry, say that again? Hooth. Yay! Oh, got it, you guys too. Good stuff, good stuff. The next one being, oh, I won the- I won the league in 04, 05, and 05 as six with Chelsea. I won the league with Leicester in 15, 16. Oh. So is that three? That's oh, three. So you're on three, Nefe's so, on three. No, I've got zero, one on the last zero. one, so I'm on four now. No, no you've you got, got three. two there. You've oh, got that, oh, you've okay, got right, one and then yeah, two yeah, there. Don't yeah, try and yeah, cheat, man. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. I'm a Spurs fan, man. Don't try and cheat the Christmas. I played in France, England, Spain, Turkey, and Belgium. I've played 41 games for France and scored five goals. I was on the losing side of a big upset in a League Cup final to Birmingham. Oh, I think I got it wrong, but... Oh, wait, sorry, say the France one again, sorry. Shamak. It was not Shamak. It was France. I, I, I played 41 games for Show France, <laughs> not Morocco, yeah, and scored five goals. Oh, 41 God. games. That was that. Okay. Yeah. You, you have three, two, one. We move on. Koscielny. No. Frozen oh. out, frozen out. I'm still in. I didn't guess. I, I didn't guess. That's so I didn't guess. guess. I didn't guess. I didn't guess. How, how do we feel about that, boys? I didn't buzz. guess. I think that's ridiculous. Guess, guess now. Guess now. No, no, guess no. Now. I'm, I'm stumped for now. So no, you buzz. So you, you've no, given he, a no he, answer. He took my buzz. You can't buzz and not answer. He took my buzz. You didn't answer. He took my buzz. Louis Thompson is the only one that's in right now. Guess now. Guess now. Guess now. Louis. No, no, no. Nifei's out. Cameron's out. Ben's out. Frozen out until the end. I forgot what the first. What the first time. I played in France, England, Spain, Turkey, and Belgium. I played 41 games for France and scored five goals. I was on the losing side of a big upset in a League Cup final to Birmingham. I won two Premier League titles with Man City. I know who it is. Oh, fuck. I know, I know who it is. Oh, Bakri Sanger. He shouldn't oh. have fussed. No, wait, 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 oh. wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. That's wrong. So you're... Not? You, you've, you've, you've... No, no, no. I'm ready. I've got Do you it. want the last clue? It's not Bakri Sanger. No, we want the last out. clue. Yeah. Yeah, these, were, these were done, aren't they? Nifei and Louis are done. He's I've guessed. Got answer. I've got he ready to go. But he's, he's guessed. Okay. He's really guess. yeah, so everyone's you buzzed. back in. You've actually, Cam, you Every, buzzed. Everyone What's buzzed. your answer? Ben hasn't buzzed. Again. Sam and Nasri? It was Sam and Nasri. Oh, you fuck me. I thought it was cliche. I, 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 I was like, I thought it was cliche. Oh, oh, I'm going to give Cam one there. I'll take I'm gonna one. Give Cam I'll one. take one. So we Cam is currently four three. We're scoreless. Because he went uh, uh, when when we tested this uh, phase, I also went back. He's saying Angel Cleesham before yeah. I did something. Yeah, um, Cam, mate, what's going on? I don't know, mate. <laughs> so, just before I go into this, Cam's on four. You're on three. Zero zero. You two zero zero. So, so you either need to get it on the first or the second attempt to okay. be within any chance. Uh, I like, I like is this the last one? <laughs> we got to go. Uh, for it, this yeah. This is if if there's any kind of tie break, then we can go into guess the career part. Yeah. But Fun. this is officially 
the last one. I won EFL Young Player of the Year whilst at Exeter. Ollie Watkins. Oh! oh! And oh, yeah. Lee Face steals oh, it. That is great. That is uh, uh, deservedly. Lee Face steals it at the that death. Was in, that was insane. Oh, Wow. That oh, is man. impressive. Man. He risked yeah. his whole game there, to be honest. I, I thought there's no way I'm giving Cam a chance. You were one point behind. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way yeah. I'm giving you know, Cam a chance. You, know, you know when you can see a it, last man. minute 40 yard equalizer? That's what I feel like I've just done. You can only turn around and respect him. I mean, what a, what a guess, mate. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was good. Gone. The Do next you know one. Yeah. I was watching his highlights for Exeter the other day. Oh, really? uh, <laughs> fair play. Fair play. I, I, the next one's being I won Championship Player of the Year in 2020. I, I, I scored with my first shot on target for England in 2021 I've scored 45 Prem goals and I currently play for Aston Villa I would have got it on one so I never really set a chance there, to be honest with you. <laughs> well there we go so that's the end of the episode wow we've had great fun boys really great have. fun please tune in to the Man U versus Manchester City live stream on Sunday 3 o'clock 3.15 around that time we'll put it out on the socials so check those out at Centre Spot Podcast like this video subscribe to the channel Leave a comment down below for the boys and see you next week. Go, Go Spurs! Spurs.